monde, quel plaisir d'être ici. Thank you very much for this wonderful welcome, Francisco. Thank you very much for pulling this together. It's a, a, a wonderful opportunity. I want to thank the Consejo Coordinador Empresarial for organizing today's event. Thank you also to the Business Council of Canada, uh, uh, Goldie, uh, and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce for your support in bringing us all together. I'm joined by a number of my colleagues, Minister Ng, our Minister of uh, International Trade and Small Businesses, uh, Minister Jolie, our Minister of Foreign Affairs, and Minister Mendicino, our Minister of Public Safety. I'm also joined uh, by Maninder Sidhu, who is our Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Global Affairs responsible for the Americas, and Julie Zerowitz, who is the chair of our Parliament's Canada-Mexico Friendship Group, uh, as well as Canada's ambassador to Mexico, uh, Graham Clark, and others. It's also so great to be joined by so many friends uh, in this room, obviously uh, from the business, labor, and financial community in Canada, people like uh, Goldie, Flavio, Marc-André, Tabitha, Jody, and so many others. Um, but really important as well that we have uh, business leaders uh, from across the continent, from the United States and Mexico. We're all here because we understand how important economic cooperation between our three countries is. Since the signing of NAFTA three decades ago, we've seen an extraordinary economic expansion across our continent with unprecedented growth in trade has come unprecedented integration uh, of uh, our supply chains, our efforts, and our prosperity for citizens. But it hasn't been without its challenges over the past years. And I wanted to start off uh, by saying thank you to you all. Uh, a few years ago, uh, we're talking amongst friends now, uh, we recognized that the extraordinary success of this integrated free trade zone, larger free trade zone than any other in the world, including the European Union, uh, was under real threat. We almost lost NAFTA. And the Mexican government and uh, me and my government in Canada worked very, very hard to try and convince the American administration of the time of how important uh, trade with friends, integrated supply chains, reliable partnerships, and continental approach to building opportunities for our citizens was. And I was pretty convincing, and I know the Mexican government worked very, very hard to make that point as well, but we couldn't have done it without the business leaders and the labor leaders in this room who understood deeply that it was a matter of individual and shared prosperity, that it was a matter of the well-being of our countries, of our communities and our, our citizens to get it right. So not only did we protect NAFTA, not only did we renegotiate NAFTA, but we actually improved NAFTA. And the work that you did to make sure that we can continue to move forward and stay active in making sure that the benefits of this trade and growth accrue to all of our citizens is unbelievably important. We've seen protectionism rise around the world over the past years, questions about globalization, concerns about the impacts on workers. Nobody ever argues that trade doesn't create growth. We know trade creates growth. But what citizens and communities got skeptical about was that trade was creating growth for them. And that's why in our approach with renegotiating NAFTA, we made sure, all of us, that workers' protections, environmental protections, community protections, uh, people's rights, including indigenous peoples, including opportunities for women, as a part of demonstrating that the prosperity that trade creates can and must deliver benefits for everyone. That was our focus, and that is ultimately why we succeeded, because of the workers who knew that they were going to see good jobs long into the future as we work together. Our auto sector is a great example of this. From Windsor to Detroit to Saltillo, workers are building cars people rely on. 
And these are good middle class jobs that support families and communities in each of our countries. Not just that, but we're now working together to build the electric vehicles that people want to drive. Of course, those vehicles rely on batteries made with critical minerals. Well, Canada released our critical mineral strategy just a few weeks ago, and it lays out Canada's plan to capitalize on the once in a generation opportunity we all have right now to be leaders as we move forward towards a clean economy and reduce our reliance on less re reliable trade partners around the world. We know that Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine has highlighted how important for Europe, for example, having reliable supplies of minerals, of energy is. And everywhere around the world, with the disruptions of the pandemic, people are understanding, yes, supply chains need to be efficient, but they also need to be resilient and reliable. And that's why the friendship, not just the partnership, but the friendship between our three countries as reliable partners is one of the great advantages that Canada has. Uh, that, that, that Canada North, uh, and uh, uh, Mexico and the United States have. In an uncertain world, Canada is a stable and reliable partner, and we're also a leader in responsible mining. We're home to almost half the world's publicly listed mining and mineral exploration companies, with a presence in more than 100 companies, countries, and I'm so glad to see so many members from the mining community here today. But when we talk about critical minerals, we're not just talking about natural resource extraction. We know that critical minerals are essential for so many of the jobs and businesses and innovations and uh, technologies that the world is going to be relying on in the coming years and decades. Those initiatives, whether it's green initiatives, whether it's quantum and AI initiatives that are going to rely on these kinds of responsibly developed, economically sustained uh, environmentally developed uh, minerals that are going to matter so much. Um, we know there's a lot more work to do. We know we always have to stay on our guards as various political forces come and go and uh, put pressure. But I can tell you uh, that whether it's on critical minerals, whether it's on agri-food innovations, whether it's in the auto sector, uh, whether it's in energy, particularly renewable energy, we have so many opportunities that the world is looking to us to create and deliver together. It's time for us to continue to step up. Nos travailleurs du secteur.